China is known for mass-produced cheap goods, not cars. So why is it that many are predicting them to take over the motoring industry, taking market share from European, American and other Asian countries in the car world? But this question has a seemingly obvious answer, cheap electric cars. But as it turns out, this likely rise will be due to more than just cheap labour and high quantities being produced. This is part of a long-term plan for many Chinese brands, and it signals the beginning of, of the end of the automotive world that we know today, when a Chinese invasion of cars hits western roads within the next decade. The major Chinese companies have been making cars since the 1950s and 60s, with many being controlled and owned by the central or local governments. For example, the Big Four, which comprises of FAW, Dongfeng, Chang'an, and SAIC, are all controlled by some form of government, and each region has their own local government-run car company. Private companies began emerging in the 1980s, such as Geely and Great Wall Motor, with BYD being founded in 2003. Since economic reform began, these companies have grown massively due to the enormous middle class that now exists in China, and these firms began moving into the next stage of growth that has massively boosted their worldwide reach and improved the quality of cars sold. This stage is purchasing from other companies in the West and forming partnerships with established foreign manufacturers. In 2005, Nanjing Automobile bought the MG brand and their Longbridge factory after the collapse of the MG Rover Group. In 2007, the first MGs built in China were revealed, being the TF3 and 7. These were just continuations of previous cars, however. In the same year, SAIC bought out Nanjing and therefore MG. Under the new parent company, this is where the main progress has occurred. The first all-new MG in 16 years, the MG6, was launched in 2011, and in 2013 the car that kickstarted the brand, the MG3, was unveiled. It has sold well, and this success was continued with crossovers like the GS, HS and ZS, and their hybrid and electric counterparts. These have sold very well, especially in the UK, the HS being the best-selling car in January, was at one point the fourth best-selling overall, although it has now fallen out of the top 10. The development of EVs by MG has been great for sales and is part of the reason for their ever-growing market presence. Cars like the MG4 and MG5 being practical for families and being some of the best and, and cheapest in their category, despite being well-built and reliable. MG can no longer be considered British, with all their cars being produced in Asia, but this is what has made them so successful. Their cars are affordable whilst being good quality and they have a rapidly expanding dealership network which just shows how far Chinese ownership has taken the brand. From bankruptcy to making some of the best EVs on the market in less than 20 years. Another company from China that has been making major moves in the West is Geely. They began building cars in 2002 after previously making fridges, then motorbikes and then vans before deciding to focus on cars. In 2010, they completed a takeover of Volvo cars from Ford for $1.8 billion. Since then, Geely have set about modernising the brand with focus on small engines, and now only new models are being developed with hybrid powertrains. They reintroduced the 90 range, with the S90 and V90 returning, and a redesigned XC90. In 2015, the Swedish brand sold more than a million cars the first time ever, crucially with increased sales in America. The Care by Volvo scheme started in 2017 in Europe and the US, and this is just one example of the forward thinking brought in by the Chinese parent company. They also plan on building autonomous cars, and they will be all electric by 2030. Part of Volvo's electric push has been due to the reinvention of Polestar as an EV brand. Previously, Volvo's racing division, it was announced it would become Volvo's electric division in 2017, and production began with the Polestar 1 in 2019. Whilst not being well selling at all, it was an impressive display of technology, and the Polestar 2 and 3 have sold well and no doubt helped Volvo develop and put into production the XC40 Recharge, and develop the EX90, EM90 and EX30. Another brand under the Geely name is Lincoln Co. Using the same platform as Volvo and Polestar, they have 7 models out right now, mainly being SUVs. The Swedish Chinese brand operates as a direct to consumer brand. And whilst the Chinese market is profitable, the countries in Europe they try to sell to don't do much for the brand and the European division is running at a loss. In 2017, a year after the formation of Lincoln Co, Geely bought 51% of Lotus, 
This may seem odd at first look, as a not very profitable, low volume sports car business doesn't seem to fit into the group well, but Geely have worked well to change the future of the brand. They made the unpopular decision to end production of the Elise Exige in Evora, and they were replaced by the Amira, designed to be more practical while still bringing the same driving experience as its predecessors. They also introduced the Avia, a 2000 horsepower electric hypercar which is currently in production with deliveries expected to begin shortly. In 2021, they announced a deal with Alpine to develop electric cars with joint platforms, and they have committed to making only EVs by 2028. These will include the Electra SUV, the Emea Saloon, and two unnamed cars, the 134 and 135, which will be another electric SUV and electric supercar respectively. For the purists, Lotus is dying a slow sad death, but it will be interesting to see what they can make in the future and if they stick to their core principles despite the different types of cars and make lightweight, good handling cars in the EV sector. Geely are making a splash in western markets, despite many people not knowing who they are. This has been a success in my eyes, in that they have been able to create new successful brands without too much uproar, and have been able to modernise Volvo in a seemingly natural way that has boosted sales. Spend a day in the UK, and you will see the number of Geely owned cars on the roads, as they now own LEVC who make all the new taxis in Britain, and electric vans as well. They also have a nearly 10% stake in Daimler, and a similar stake in AB Volvo and make all Volvo branded trucks, buses and construction vehicles. This just shows the variety and forward thinking displayed by the brand, which is quietly beginning to make a massive impact on the European car market. Another way the Chinese market is growing is due to partnerships between Western companies and those in China. Almost all major manufacturers have some sort of deal for a Chinese company to make variants of their models. This was due to rules preventing foreign manufacturers having control of cars as the domestic brand had to have 51% shares in the joint venture. However, in 2017, the rules were changed to allow foreign car makers to have full control over their sales in China, and it has seen BMW and Volkswagen take 75% stakes in their joint ventures. More crucially, it has allowed Tesla to open a gigafactory in Shanghai, which was the first car factory fully owned by a foreign manufacturer in China. Since then, Tesla have seen incredible sales in China, now having taken a 13.2% EV market share in China and selling over 84,000 China-made cars in August. The Gigafactory produces the Model 3 and Model Y, the two most popular models, as well as superchargers. Other major manufacturers may follow suit after the success of Tesla, and China may handle the production of even more foreign brands in the near future. Tesla are the biggest EV brand in the world, but they face stiff competition from BYD. They now only make hybrids and EVs, and last year they sold more of them than Tesla. Despite being behind in terms of pure electric vehicles, they are predicted to double last year's third quarter sales. They sold nearly four times the number of Chinese-made cars Tesla did in September, with the American brand selling less than 75,000 in comparison with BYD's total of nearly 287,000. So how do they do this? The cheapest EV made by BYD, the Seagull, sells for less than a third of the price of the cheapest Model 3 in China. This is due to BYD making their own batteries. Many companies outsource this to others like Rimac or other specialised businesses, which cost significantly more than in-house production. But BYD does not just sell to the Chinese domestic market anymore. This is why Tesla should be worried. Not only are they eating away at their market share in China, they are also trying to take it in Europe. With an 11% share in the worldwide car market, they now sell cars in dealerships across the UK and also in Germany, whilst also selling well in other Asian countries such as Japan, Thailand and Singapore. Currently in the UK, only two models are available, the Dolphin and Electric Hatchback, and the Atto 3 and Electric Crossover. Sales in Europe have been slow, selling around 2,500 in July. But this is not their main market and the company admitted they are aiming for sat satisfaction from customers more than anything at the moment as they try to make BYD a household name in new markets. So when will the bubble burst? Probably no time soon. China are now the world's largest car exporter and this is despite them needing more ships to transport the cars. BYD and other manufacturers are currently making so many that there aren't enough ships to carry them and there is an order for 170 car transporting ships worldwide, mainly due to the influx of Chinese cars. BYD themselves are spending nearly $100 million for six of the largest car carriers ever, 
so there is clearly demand for Chinese cars and the supply to meet it. However, there are still tariffs on Chinese imports into America, and only 29% of British people said they would consider a Chinese car as a next vehicle in a study by Carwell. The main reasons given against not switching were politics, build quality and unfamiliarity with the brands. The second two can be fixed with good marketing and making sure that every car meets the standards of Western consumers. But even still, these concerns don't seem to have stopped Chinese cars rising in popularity in these markets, with China being responsible for 5% of the cars sold in the first 7 months of 2023 in the UK. The MG4 is the second best selling EV in the UK so far this year, and cars like the Aura Funky Cat are now making their way onto western roads, albeit in relatively small numbers for now. Despite the concerns and unfamiliarity of Chinese vehicles, the low price and technology that they offer, with variety from all sorts of brands, including startups like Neo and Xpeng, mean there is a lot more to come from the powerhouse. It says a lot that this, despite the Chinese economy suffering this year, Chinese manufacturers are having their best year ever, showing that Chinese cars are here to stay.